Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I'd like to introduce Mayor May. She is the first female uh, mayor in Fremont, California. Is that not correct? Um, yes, that is yeah. correct. Yeah. In our 62 years, I'm very honored to be the first woman and the first minority mayor yeah, that's in beautiful. our city's history. So, go back in time. Was there ever a moment that you wanted to become a mayor, or did you kind of stumble into it? I, I don't think there was a moment that said, um, other than when I ran for the election before that, um, where I thought for, for any specific reason I started off in life wanting to be a mayor. Okay. I think um, that different jobs and experiences mm -hmm. and uh, living in the city have given me that perspective or that goal or interest in wanting to serve in that capacity. Nice. And you have two children? I do. What are their ages? Uh, my daughter will be turning 21 this summer. Beautiful. And uh, my son is uh, just turned 17 in December. Fantastic. So. And they've gone through the whole Fremont uh, yes. system? That's part of what got me originally involved in Beautiful. Uh, the government is, is the need or the concern as a parent. And, and I think that's what drives a lot of people is the interest of being involved in the community and civic engagement. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes when you're going through experiences, for my case, it was my daughter being overloaded from kindergarten. Yeah. And uh, so looking at those experiences then, when I went to the meetings, parents were either uh, very emotional, screaming or yelling, and uh -huh. I thought there may be a more positive way, and since I had a business background, I tried using some of those um, techniques or, or strategies in terms of working with the school district and my fellow parents on trying to address those issues. Okay, and you went through the PTA system yourself? Yes, yes. So. Um, That's dedication. I, w I was really lucky. Uh, when it comes to examples and role models, mm -hmm. um, my parents are immigrants from China to Taiwan to Canada and then to Chicago, okay. which is where I was born. Um, and growing up, even though my mother was not as familiar with the educational system, um, I really appreciated that she took the time to show her interest in me as a child as her child and then also the community mm -hmm. and that even though her English wasn't always the smoothest or easiest she would always volunteer in the classrooms or help out so yeah. as my child got older um, I was involved in preschool and I also got involved with PTA and I strongly encourage parents or fellow uh, colleagues to get involved in that area because um, looking back I've looked at so many different um, parents and children and relationships and I don't think any person sits there and goes, oh, I wish I had one more meeting, board meeting, or anything else. But your kids go by very fast, and um, I really valued the fact that I was able to get to know my child mm -hmm. and their friends, because at the earlier stages of life, they tend to really want you there oh, still. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, as they get older, they exert more independence, and that's hopefully the thing. That and that's what we want. That's what I'd like to see. That, yeah, I joke with people, I said, I hope they fly out of the nest and don't fall out of the tree. <laughs> and yeah. So yeah. then we want to give them those types of skills and opportunities. But being involved or caring yeah. shows your kids that you value their education mm -hmm. and their, that there are friendships and things too. Mm -hmm. And you're supporting their friends also. Yes. That's the key thing too. Some children nowadays, I believe, they don't get a lot of assistance at home. And you showed up not necessarily just for your children, but for the other children. Well. Um, other activities that I've been involved in and I really think help give that perspective are things like I was a, a I'm a lifetime Girl Scout Fantastic. and I also was a Boy Scout I was an explorer nice. and so I've been both um, and then I've been a leader in oh, uh, Dead Mom and things. so uh, those types of whether you're volunteering you don't have to necessarily be the leader and that's the one thing I also often tell students to be a leader or to be involved in the community it doesn't mean that you have to be elected. It doesn't mean that you have to be the leader, but being willing to take a role to help um, be participating in the community. It's easy, and I think that in this role as mayor or in other roles, where people come and often complain about different issues that they see, um, whether it's traffic, um, congestion, or other things. But it's more valuable to me, and it's very helpful if. Um, we get people involved with not just the problems and calling them to my attention or to the council's attention, but the solutions. And that's where uh, we're very fortunate. We have commissions. We have opportunities where we have open city hall or technology to ask people to get more involved. Because I truly feel that in our community, we are much stronger when we work together. And so these types of opportunities, uh, right now we're also, um, tonight we're talking about the mobility task force 
and that's a, a city council meeting tonight's okay. Tuesday. <laughs> and uh, so we have uh, 14 members in the community um, who came together and are helping us develop a mobility plan. And so that's going to be worked on. It's been started last year. It'll be about a year uh, project that we're trying to reach out to community, look at surveys, look at different things such as safety, right. smart signaling, because we're a smart city. Um, Fremont also, about a year ago, a year and a half ago, people might have said we got brighter. But we don't mean just intelligence, but physically, <laughs> but also brighter as a city, where we switched out all the LED lights, uh, for the street lights to LED lights to make it brighter, so better visibility, so people could see. And mm -hmm. we had actually a slide recently in the state of city that showed before and after, and how much brighter and clearer, and you can see the traffic or crosswalks. And something that, you know, that calling to people's attention, and also the cost savings, it's being huge. environmentally friendly. But then, truly, a lot of it is also education. Because as much as we send lights and as much as we do signaling, um, I jokingly tell people when you walk into that lighted crosswalk or the flashing crosswalk, we have some that are next to the hospital. Um, it does not create a magic force field. You still have to look left and right, and common sense still prevails. And that's true yeah. for our drivers. And so we actually just also a week ago in our uh, library had one of our first traffic safety uh, discussions and just open for the public to come and ask questions. Nice. We had a presentation from the police. It was two different sessions. It was really well received and we hope to do more again in the future. Uh, every year we also have Kids and Kites Festival where mm -hmm. we do it at the uh, park where we invite people out and we have different booths and vendors. Um, we also have every other year a public safety fair mm -hmm. where we have our um, fire and police and we encourage people to come out to learn about that. Um, last year alone, in our um, pump, 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 emergency preparedness pump programs and CERT programs, we had over 2,600 people wow, that went good through for that. You. And so, in a case of a real emergency, um, we, we want to make sure that we're best prepared. Because mm -hmm. as, as, as much as we have uh, staff, we only have about 190 to 200, you know, public, you know fire, fire, police um, men. When it comes to the situation, of a, and so with our firefighters, we have a limited crew that are on site always. Um, and in case of a natural disaster, we're really counting and hoping that our citizens are also prepared and right. understand because it's 200, almost 235,000 compared to us. We're a little outnumbered. Yeah. And so we need people to get involved. And um, you were saying earlier, like even being involved from the school side. When I was on the school site, and I encourage parents to do that too, is get do the emergency earthquake drill. Okay. Uh, and uh, at their, their homes, at their, at their schools, at okay. their homes. Mm -hmm. um, actually, about events, we also have a lot of social media and events with our fire and our police. We've had um, we, we we try to be culturally sensitive. We've had badges and boba, cu uh, custard with cops, and even uh, cannolis and cops. Nice. And so we've had a lot of different activities where we have people come out and talk about some okay. of their concerns that they see with traffic, with crime, uh, because we really want to hear and be able to have this partnership. A lot of the public safety awareness efforts require that. Um, a good example is I'm looking at the video cameras right mm -hmm. now, and we're trying to implement technology, and when we've had some incidents with um, burglaries or other thefts, yes. we ask residents to register their video cameras so that we know that they're have one on their sites Perfect. and so those help us then to make good resolution and bring you know forth solutions to those uh, situations to figure out who you know hopefully solve the crimes mm -hmm. it helps better if you go to report a concern on our website right. not because I as the mayor don't want to hear about it but because when it goes to report a concern you're, there are about 30 concerns that are already pre-listed whether it's street lights or mm -hmm. traffic safety or other programs and if you click on it, then it routes to the staff members that are responsible for that role. Perfect. And so rather than coming to me and then I have to look at it and send it to the departments, this actually better directs it, facilitates it. Obviously, if they're not hearing back or, or not, uh, uh, people have generally tend to, to share more of the complaints sometimes <laughs> yeah. and other things. But uh, in the role as the mayor, we have so many positive things too. Beautiful. And so I was going to let you know that we are so fortunate as a, uh, as a community to have such diversity. Yeah, we do. And so um, I've been able to participate in interfaith uh, Thanksgiving activities, um, different cultural events, different religious events. 
and it makes us more appreciate one another. Yeah. And, uh, and that's something that uh, I haven't always experienced as a child and growing up um, in Pennsylvania, but here um, we, we're very fortunate and it's kind of a special thing that makes Fremont uh, a unique place to live. Yeah. I wanted to give Fremont um, words of wisdom. What would it be? I think the words of wisdom would be um, that Fremont is going through a lot of different changes mm -hmm. um, and that if people are concerned about it to get involved Beautiful. and hopefully beyond just calling me and uh, <laughs> registering a complaint right. but to get involved in committees to get involved in your schools to get involved with emergency preparedness because mm -hmm. the success of any city just like our school district over the years um, as well as the community is based off of people's making that difference volunteering caring about it um, it's much more than just talking about it, right. it's actually taking an active participation. Very and nice. so I hope people will join me in that. Yeah, very nice. I'm very impressed with you. Oh, thank you. No, in truth, I really no. am. Um, you, you really give so much of yourself, and you really are a community builder, and I honor that in you, so thank you. Thank you. Yeah. At times, it, uh, to be honest, and I have to thank my family too, my husband and my children, is that it hasn't always been easy. Um, when I first started serving on the school board, um, my son would say, don't go, Mommy, because when you come home, you know, you can't read any bedtime stories, I'll be sleeping, I hope so, at 10.30 or <laughs> yeah, 2 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> um, but my husband would bring the kids by, and it was nice sometimes for the public to see that I'm still a mom, because mm -hmm. they'd be like, good night, Mommy, from the back of the room, and allow people to understand that I'm more than just the official that they elected, but I'm also a human being, and I have, parent, mm -hmm. I have children, I have a parent. And that made me look more holistic and right. allowed my children, though, also the opportunity to see that you, know, you can be involved in the community. So, mm -hmm. you know, on both sides, I'm very appreciative of how much love and understanding and support they've given to me over the years. Nice. I wouldn't be, again, here without the support of my family and friends. Mm -hmm. And then so many community members who, every time that I've run, have really stepped up and helped me make mm -hmm. that difference. This is my beginning of my second year, Beautiful. so I have three more years, Beautiful. Um, and I'm hoping to make a big difference, or at least to bring out the best in the community through these challenging times. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of discussions right now in the community at federal and state levels that sometimes separate people in terms of partisanship right. and um, values or other discussions, but one of the things I hope people can learn to do is to agree to respectfully disagree, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. really important to have that different um, blends to realize that while we don't always agree with one another, that we hopefully are trying to bring the best of our community together. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Thank you, thank you for your time. Thank you. For your words of wisdom. Thanks. And for your service. It's a privilege. Thank, thank you, you thank so you. much. Thank, thank you. you.